Hi guys, welcome back to another video. This probably isn't worth making a video out of, but just because of the car, it's actually quite a nice 2017, 16 actually, sorry, 2016 uh, Toyota GT86. Now, what the customer's complaint? The customer's complaint is that it has failed the NCT. And, sorry, I'm pulling my headlight off my head. Has failed the NCT and on emissions and they have then went along and tried maybe a couple of bits and pieces somewhat of the parts cannon has gone off we've lambda sensors and spark plugs and a couple of bits and pieces thrown in the box i won't even go rooting too much i'm not going to concern myself with those at this point in time i'm going to just start from a level playing field and see where we go now i've done a cold scan have no lights on except for a tire pressure monitoring light which you can see down there in the left hand corner but other than that, I have no check engine light on. We're going to come out. Have our scans still running. And I'm in engine management here. Into history codes. I have no codes. Back. Pending codes. I have no codes. Current codes. I have no codes. So that's some little bit interesting. The other thing I noticed, quite a noisy vehicle. When I look down at his lambda center and stuff that was definitely been fitted in it down here, I'm looking at the exhaust. And the exhaust is a very shiny, what do you call it? Stainless steel, nearly a straight pipe. Seems to be all the way back. So what I start to question is the actual exhaust system what kind of an exhaust system is on it. As we all know, they have to have um, catalytic converters and stuff. Get up in the air and have a look. Okay, guys, we have it up in the air and I pull off the under tray. So it's a flat four Subaru engine. You can see follow our exhaust system out from bank two. We have no catalytic converter, straight pipe up, straight pipe around. And then we have a straight pipe all the way back. A box but not a catalytic converter and the same in the very very back we have a box again sitting there okay same from the other bank bank one we have our sitting here coming out no cat so the straight pipe is going to be creating the problem now we have a lambda sensor sitting in there which has been replaced as you saw there but i'm believing that maybe someone might have deleted some Type data and they're doing these exhaust systems um, as in ie the second care or the second lambda sensor would be looking for some kind of information airflow data just see why do we not have a second lambda sensor where is it gone has someone taken it out or what be the story We would go customize with these anyway. Air fuel voltage. I'm only reading now my own airflow lambda bank one sensor one. I'm actually going to get out of here and I'm going to get into OBD just for the crack. I'll do that and I'll um check back in with you in a second okay guys i dropped the car down or the vehicle down again i was going looking for a block connector or a plug or something like that but lo and behold i have a block connector here there's that first lambda center but i didn't see can i see, can I see it i didn't see that just there not that that blue wire New wire anyway, to hide down there is the second lambda sensor, okay? What I'm doing is I'm looking at a, a bit of light data. I went into OBD. And in OBD, I was just looking at fuel trims and open and close loop and engine speed and stuff like that. What I have here is my O2 sensor or voltage bank one sensor one. You can see that. We have movement, 
Up here then, I have O2 sensor voltage, bank one sensor two. Interesting, the concept, but anyway, that voltage is wrong here. Now, is that crackers and mad because of cat being gone out of it or a failing in the sensor or what? I'm gonna try and have a look and try and manipulate the signal wire into doing something for myself. But right now, I'm gonna get back underneath again and have a look. Are they putting one sensor on one of the one of the four exhaust pipes out and then put another sensor on that same pipe? I don't know because you'd be thinking if there's this if there's four sensors in there, rather than what I can see is two, you'd be thinking that one would be up front, as it is, this one, and then the other one would be far back after the four pipes join together or branch together. I'm going to look, I'm going to try and identify whether this thing is faulty. We do have no cat on it, so this thing is either been decatted or a straight pipe, but is that faulty also? I would like to see about. 0.5, of a volt there all the time. If I'd no cat in it, what that would be doing is mimicking different kind. I think these are air to fuel ratio sensors, but mimicking that is what I'd normally see. Unless it's a different sensor, I'm going to see different voltages. But get in and we're going to have a look again. Have a look underneath. Okay, guys, we're back underneath. Having a little look again. So I just never saw that lambda sensor there, but it's in this exhaust. In this exhaust system, it's just here where all four pipes merge together. So I'm assuming that's fair enough for, but maybe on the OE one with the catalysts down here, maybe it's gonna be a slight bit further back, you know, or situated back here or something. Maybe, don't really know. I'll upload a picture. I have done a little bit of a search, it's over 2,000 euros for the catalyst system that sits here on the manifold. A bit of a pipe then, I don't know if that'll join into the other one. But then we do have a second cat sitting here, or potentially should have a second one sitting here on the original exhaust system. Now I don't know what we get away with. Hopefully from here we can join on to the one back beyond. But it's probably all only for an NCT. Probably not as a national car test here in Ireland where they check emissions. But that's our problem anyway. And as I said, I don't like that voltage at all. So we may have a sensor gone. I'll do a little bit more digging on that now. Okay guys. I've just created an open circuit. So the lambda sensor that was buried down there, I've had very little change in voltage when I disconnected as compared to when I had it connected. Might be an interesting one if the other one would stick in there just to see what the other one would read in the atmosphere. Um, Okay, well we know the cause of our problem anyway. Well, right now it's gonna be time to start testing. We have wiring and signal integrity. Don't know, it's like a, uh, maybe a power probe. I can pull that signal wire up and or down, but I'll just have to go off onto another job, but I'll come back and do a little bit of testing this in the next half hour. Now. Before I go, car's running there. I'm just gonna see, did I create a fault code? I'm going back. Codes present. I'd say this thing is deleted out of it. Okay, so we'll get in and we start playing with that. They couldn't, they couldn't, couldn't really take the deep, the DPF, take the catalyst or the catalytic converter out of it without deleting some stuff. Couldn't because once the car or the lambda sensor would see the second lambda sensor, the car would see the second lambda sensor switching the same as the first, that is enough for it to know there's no cat in that. Okay. So they had to delete something, whoever done it. Right, keep on going. Okay guys, a couple of days have passed and I told the client or the owner of the car what I actually wanted. And lo and behold, he came up with the goods. So I have two separate items here. It's gonna be a catalyst or a catalytic converter stuck in in the middle of that summer. And I believe there's another one here. But that is really only for emissions rather than engine running. Now my instruction is if I can get that bit in, 
He thinks that that'll fit easy, but there could be differences between this and maybe not to put in this if, but I probably preferred both of them in there. Anyway, there is what we're, we have. I'm sticking a scope up just to have a look at the two sensor signals, just to see what's happening here. But what I have done, I just sprayed in a little bit of propane first before I dove on into this or drove on into this, just to have a little fast look to see is the actual second lambda sensor able to create voltage? Now, on talking to him, when I was talking about this, lo and behold, he said, did you go rooting in the box? But sure, I didn't really go rooting in the box of gaskets and CT failures. I have spark plugs in there, and lo and behold, he had a second lambda sensor. Now, the first one had been, been replaced. That's that one down there. And the second one that was we were trying to see was buried down there, hadn't been replaced just because I suppose it was a little bit more awkward. Now I haven't had a look for the back probe and this is really a non-informative exercise. I'm only just having a little fast look. On the scope, I was back probing. There's two black wires. So the two black wires on both of them, the black on the top, on both of them, there's two blue wires and then there's two white wires. What I'm seeing by back probing I haven't got a diagram for it, wire and diagram. Didn't even go looking for it. What I'm seeing though is that the white wire seems to be the signal wire. Nope, oh, doing something funny there. I'm gonna start running again because I sent in the propane to create this. I just, okay, she's gone actually rich of her own accord. Gone rich of her own accord, actually, wow. So it's just out of the siding. To start switching and going all the way up to 0.8 of a volt. I'm going fuel trims here. Oh, you that little bit of a hesitation. Oh. Now, the first one is an air fuel ratio center, sensor. Not madly familiar with these, but I know they do operate or believe somewhat like a wider broadband. Lambda sensor. So that is carrying a whole lot higher voltage. A couple of flicks of the throttle nearly make that voltage change ever so slightly. We'll go along and we're gonna spray in some stuff just to see what happens, okay? okay. Actually, do you know what I should do? I should try and get all, all of them in shot. I'm spraying in fuel there now. So I am actually making this rich or richer. I'm kind of stalling it so I can't tell you I'm fantastically controlling the flow of propane. That's me giving it skirts. How do you want to see? Another squirt gun in there. Another squirt gun in there. So, whoop, I'll get rid of that. What we're actually seeing here is that the second, sorry, when the first lambda sensor is heading down, heading down, it's the opposite. It drops in voltage for a rich condition and gets higher for a lean condition. Down here, the actual sensor, I'm saying here, is good. It's able to do its job. It's seeing that we are sending in some form of fuel, as in it's seeing a rich condition. Our fuel trims, I'm suggesting around that point here, four or six or so, here we're starting to drop because it's seeing a rich condition. Because here we're starting to pull back on our fuel trims. Short term, especially long term, is starting to slowly react. So I'm saying that them sensors are okay, but anyway, neither here there. He wants me to put in that. Maybe I'll do it, maybe we won't. I don't really know. But anyway, for now, all I'm doing is just looking at that. We're actually going to go in here and have a little fast look at that as well. Okay, the green channel is the the green channel is the first lambda sensor. Green channel is now hovering like what the scan tool, the live data was saying is at between two and two and a half volts. The red channel is actually at zero, but that's what we are seeing. Let me get our propane again.
Okay, so again, we're seeing that this sensor can actually work. Okay. Now also, what we're seeing here is that the engine ECU from our live data, from our live data, the actual engine ECU is seeing what The engine ECU is seeing what we are actually doing. And because of that, the ECU is getting the information, giving us the information through the scan tool. But I'm saying that more than likely, someone has the software deleted out of it because that engine ECU does not care about seeing high voltages or mimicking effects of the first lambda sensor or something like it. Now I know we have two different sensors. So we have air fuel ratio and just a lambda sensor. But in saying that, the ECU is not triggering a fall. So there's something wrote out of this thing, but it doesn't bother me right now. Right now our job is to get this thing through an emission test. Second lambda sensor is only to, only to trigger a fall if the, la if the catalytic converter is not doing its job and send a warning light on the dash. For now we're not gonna care about it. We're gonna drive on and get this stuff fitted, okay? Very easy way to get out, lads. I can get up at all the bolts nearly with a, uh, can't get up with that one rightly with a power tool, but it's still kind of handy. Two bolts here. Two bolts here. I can see what they're saying on the way back down. There's a flange connection here and on our exhaust here it's a straight bolt on on both sides. So I'd say for to start we're going to get in this thing and see where we end up. Simple as enough. Wrap it out of it now. Okay guys, as easy as that. Came off. Quite handy. No big deal. Man says he wants his new lambda sensor in it. Anyway, here's our new lambda sensor. I don't know if this is going to be lifting it or up on it. This is no cat, cat, catalyst. But from looking at it here, what I can see is exhaust gas comes out of this port and it's in between, underneath that tin, I get that. And exhaust gas comes out of this port. And I'm suggesting that this is coming down and around. This one then comes down and around. And then here, all the exhaust gas giants together for the first lambda center. And then it goes through the catalytic converter, which is quite a small one now at this point in time, to be honest with you. It would be nicer to have that in there. But then it goes to this, and this lambda sensor sees what or how the cat is actually operating on, whether it's so big or whatever, okay? But that's time to go back up into it, okay? Okay, guys, our catalyst is in, fitted, and one singular one. I went off for a drive just to warm it up and have a look and see what we're up against. Our air, air fuel ratio sensor look is rattling away. I never had any question with that. The actual second lambda sensor now I'm seeing switching while driving and while I'm under load. So if I'm, would say, planting the accelerator down, I'm seeing a rich condition. When I leave it go, I'm seeing a lean condition. Maybe I'm second guessing even and seeing, is this an air fuel ratio sensor? As I said there, I don't know too much about it, but the long short of it is, is while I'm idling now, she's starting to cool down. We're hovering we had, we were down at like very, very low zero numbers. At this point in time, what I would like to see, and as I said prior in this thing, I would like to see kind of around 500 millivolts or so, maybe six, five would be about halfway, so maybe about six, maybe or a little bit above it. I'm seeing here seven, 65 and I'm going to just hold the throttle there for a while just to see what way it reacts a little bit high Traveling down as the catalyst is getting hotter. I think that was a change in my lake or throttle position. Just heading back up to that. 
700 millivolts. It is a little bit high. What I did find was I did find that NCT cert in the box of tricks that he had. And our lambda was a little bit high, our CO was very high. Here, look, we have a total a totally different uh, voltage coming here from what we had. So, catalyst do that? Did the lambda sensor change do that? She's actually creeping back down according as it's warming up. I only went up top of the road. Um, I get his. Uh, my emissions tester doesn't work at this point in time so I'm only going on this to be sure we're right so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this for now a fix I'm going to get it in for an NCT leave them do the emissions test on it and see where we're at purely because I don't have my emissions tester at this point in time is kaput um, yeah I don't know hopefully someone is getting something from this and I'll stick up or talk a little bit about the failure not the failure sheet the failure sheet and our pass sheet when or which it should pass all day long um, and that's where we're going to go right now okay okay guys here's our failure sheet so the photocopy of it but what do we see our CO lambda's a little bit off our CO a long way above point two, and right now my emissions tester, which is getting old, and I have a lambda sensor fault. But I can check my CO. My CO point two is below point two is a pass. We have point zero one hydrocarbons. Then we have anything above two hundred parts per million of hydrocarbons and we have one. So for now our little emissions tester that's getting shook and old is nearly doing enough for me for now. Look I get you a I get you a glance at now we're stuck up tailpipe. Now the, the long and short of it is there's two tailpipes in this. We've only one cat. There's two tailpipes at the back of it and we only have our hose stuck up one. So in theory we could be double what we're seeing but right now anyway I'm I'm saying that we're fairly happy, or even now at this point, it's far down below it, I have no hydrocarbons. Starting to climb at idle, but we still have 0.13, but anyway, there I'm saying that this is a fix. We get a picture of past certificate when it passes, okay? Okay, guys, I've just got a telephone call from the man with the GT86, and it's after passing the NCT. Now, it wasn't without its... Uh, challenges because it went for the retest and it failed and it failed on the lambda being slightly above what it what it should be um lambda as we all know well we don't all know but my little emissions tester didn't have lambda working on it because it's kind of nearly outdated but the long and short of it is what's going to give us an air leak Increase in our lambda is more than likely going to be a hole in the exhaust. So what I did is I said to him look I wonder if it's the second tailpipe that's causing the issue or if it's a hole in the exhaust So we he I believe put a glow or something over the second uh, Tailpipe and lo and behold it was in theory passing up there But then they went in they had a look and there was a little small leak at the back So what they done was they fixed a the small leak down around the back box and after they fixed that Went in for the test and whippy do it passed Eee um, past statements are probably at the scene and I probably have put it up already at this point in time but yeah that's it for the GT86 no big fanciness here it's just basically sticking in a well pin to the problem sticking in a catalytic converter and getting it for out for test it's up the country so it's not wickedly close to me and it had been at other two lads I believe prior to me and was as we saw the parts cannon going off on it but for now anyway guys that's it on this one I hope you take something away from it or a bit of entertainment or whatever it may be but for now thanks for watching please like and subscribe and i'll see you all in the next cartoon guys peter kennedy kennedy's garage signing out
talk to you later.